Hello again, my little conscripts, and welcome to another Warhammer 40k Mordian Glory video. In today's episode, I've got something a little bit different and spicy for your viewing pleasure. Rather than looking at a specific unit or analyzing a quick tip tactica, instead, we are going to be challenging ourselves. We are going to see what is the biggest guard horde army that we can make using Warhammer 40k 9th edition right now. This is definitely a video that the Commissariat approves and any infantry commander worth his salt will be salivating uncontrollably right now. And so without further ado, let's fix bayonets, be ready for blood and charge right into today's video. Now, I quickly want to say that, of course, this video is focused on an Imperial Guard horde, but I understand that we are not the only faction that can field an absolute crap ton of bodies. So if you're an Orc player or a Tinner player or a Gene Slug player or other faction that is able to really bring mass to the table, why don't you put down in the comment section the biggest horde army that you can build for your favorite faction. Even if it's a more elite focused one like Custodes, how many Custodian Guard can you really cram into the army? And it'll be really interesting to see which faction can actually create the biggest horde overall. And I might even pick out some of my favorites and do some follow-up videos on those ones as well. But with that said, let's start taking a look at this army. And I just wanna put a couple of things into context. Well, lay down a couple of ground rules, all right? When I was putting this thing together, when I was trying to work out how many infantry I could get into a big old guard army, I wasn't focused on the army being good in any way, shape or form. The challenge is purely what is the most bodies I could cram into a list. And likewise, the challenge to you, the viewer, is to try and come up with even more infantry than this one. The only real rule is that it has to be a legal army. No unbound, nothing like that. It has to be able to be fielded on the tabletop in a standard 2,000 point game. So you have at your disposal an Arcs of Omen detachment and also an allied detachment. Now that can be allied sales. That's what I went with because that was what I was most familiar with. But if you're able to work out some way of really leveraging Imperial agents or maybe even Votan or other allied detachments, then please do so and let me know what you come up with down in that comment section. Now, I began with the Arcs of Omen detachment. I figured this is the big beastie. Let's just tackle this head on and see how much we can cram into this bad boy. Beginning with the HQ sections, initially, I actually put four command squads in here. I knew I was going to focus on command squads, and I figured let's just fill up every HQ slot that we can with these things because point for point, they're actually giving me a lot of blokes. A Caden Castellan, yes, is cheaper. He's only 50 points but he's 50 points for one bloke. If I take a command squad, I can spend 75 points and get five guys in a single HQ slot. I actually went down to three command squads in the end because I realized that I could drop one and take a unit that was gonna give me 10 bodies rather than five for essentially the same price point. And we'll get into that in just a little moment. But after that, we got to the troop section. Now, the troops are pretty easy. It was going to be Caden Shock troops or infantry squads. It didn't really matter either way. Both were going to bring 10 bodies to the table for 65 points a pop. And of course, I took troops as my compulsory option because they are absolutely the cheapest source of bodies in my army. And so 12 units of Caden Shock troopers went straight in the list, adding 120 bodies. Just to be clear here, guys, I could have gone for the infantry squads and I would have counted the heavy weapon teams as two models because there's two blokes manning that heavy weapon in that squad. So when you're building your own units and you're building your own biggest guard horde, take into account that each heavy weapon team can count as two guys. That's the rule that I applied to myself. I then got into the elite choices. Now, at first, my instinct was to go for Kazakin. And Kazakin are definitely a good unit and they're cheaper than Scions. And I had plans for my allied detachment anyway. So I thought Kazakin, three squads, 300 points, easy, nice round number. 
But then I remembered that from Forge World, you can get Combat Engineers. Now, Combat Engineers are 80 points for 10 models. That's 20 points cheaper than the Kazakin. Over the course of three squads, that's 60 points saved. I can definitely use those points to get more guys in the army. So I went with three squads of Combat Engineers, adding another 30 bodies to the total. It was at this stage that I started running out of viable unit options, but fortunately we still had the heavy support section, and of course I can take heavy weapon squads. Each one of these squads is pretty cheap, 55 points a pop, and they're bringing six men per squad. Now, this isn't quite as good as 65 points for 10, but it's still a pretty cheap and a pretty good deal. With the heavy weapon teams added to the pile, at this stage, we were looking at about 188 bodies. At this point, I still had the four command squads in, and I figured that I'd pretty much maxed out the Arcs of Omen detachment without resorting to characters. I didn't want to do that yet because I still had my allied detachment of Scions. First thing to go into the detachment was three 10-man squads of Scions. Scions are actually pretty expensive. They're one of the more pricey infantry options that Guard have got available. But at this point, I don't have any other options. I can't take Kazakin in this attachment. So, Scions it is. And hell, at least it's more 10-man squads. Extra 30 bodies added to the total, easily getting us over that 200 mark. I then stuck in the compulsory Scion command squad that I needed for the detachment, getting another five Scions added on to the total body count. It was here where I thought I'd finally reached the maximum amount of multi-model units I could get. And I was down to start taking the expensive single model squads like Commissars, Death Corps, Marshals, stuff like that. But then I had a sudden inspiration and I remembered that you can take Agents of the Imperium. I had enough points left over to immediately slap a 10-man Voidsman at Arms unit into my Arcs of Omen detachment. This gave me an extra 10 bodies for just 80 points. That's a deal I'm willing to take. It's the same exchange rate as you get for combat engineers. I then checked the rules around allied detachments and agents of the Imperium, and I realized that I could take another unit of Voidsman in my sound attachment without breaking the whole thing this is where i dropped my fourth command squad which cost me 75 points and took another 10-man voidsman at arms unit this gave me an extra five bodies in total for essentially the same points and with that done we had our army three command squads 12 Cadian Shock Troops, 3 Combat Engineers, 3 Heavy Weapon Squads, a Scion Command Squad, 3 10-Man Scion Squads, and 2 10-Man Voidsman at Arms Units. In total, this came to 1,995 points, meaning we've even got 5 points left over to give one of our officers a cheeky power fist or a plow pistol, or we could even put a command rod on the Tempesta Prime in the Sion Command Squad. The final body count was 238, and what I found most interesting about this is out of that number, 200 of them were coming from full-blown 10 man squads not little scraplets here and there but actual bricks of infantry but the real big question is is the army any good or is it just a mass of uncoordinated under equipped infantry that are never going to deal any damage or achieve anything significant on the battlefield personally i think this army has legs yes pun intended because not only are you bringing mass but you've also got plenty of orders to support your infantry. You've got loads of command squads who can each do an order within 24 inch range. And that's before you even take into account relics and warlord traits that might improve the number of orders and the variety that you can bring as well. In addition, all of these troops are coming with some pretty decent equipment. The Cadians are each bringing a plasma and a melter gun to the table. And the Scions are bringing two plasma guns, two melter guns, and a plasma pistol, and a power sword on top of that as well. That's 39 long-range special weapons, if you include those plasma pistols. 
that's got a pretty decent punch just from that line infantry. The combat engineers are no slouches either. Whilst they don't have any of the flashy war gear of the Cadians or the Scions, they do come with combat shotguns. Each one of these is putting out three shots and with take aim, that's going to hit on twos at AP minus one. If you've got born soldiers on this whole force, that's going to be 90 shots from those three squads, all hitting on twos with lots of auto wounding potential. Everybody knows that heavy weapon squads are brilliant at bringing cheap indirect fire to the army as well. So we've actually got a full blown mortar pit harassing the enemy back lines and hitting those units that you're trying to hide out of line of sight. To be honest, the weakest part of the whole list are the voidsmen at arms. Whilst they're adding more bodies, they're not benefiting from orders and they're basically just equipped with lasguns. I think there's a dog in there and one guy's got a shotgun and one guy's got a gatling gun, but it's nowhere near the same firepower as the Cadians, Combat Engineers or Scions. The thing is, the Voidsmen still have an important role. They can do two things. Firstly, they can just be pushed out first as a initial screen to push back enemy deep strikers and also absorb the first charge. Or they can just be left guarding the backfield objectives, meaning that my shock troopers and the sound squads can just push out and actually start doing damage whilst the Voidsmen sit around scoring points and having a great time. One of the biggest advantages of this force, of course, is the number of casualties that it can absorb. Your opponent needs to kill more than 45 guardsmen a turn every single turn. Now, in the early part of the game, when his force is going to be at full strength, this is probably more than possible. But when you start getting into turns three and definitely four and five, your opponent's force has probably been significantly whittled down by all of your special weapons and your elite infantry. Another really cool thing you can do with this army is conduct large scale flanking maneuvers. Of course, you could start ever on the board, ranked up, marching forward, wave after wave, classic guard, classic Napoleonic style warfare. But you could put 60, 80, a hundred guys in reserve you've still going to start with like almost 150 on the board and you can just bring them in strategic reserves you can bring them in on the left flank you can bring them in on the right flank you can start threatening your opponent's deployment zone you can literally have a full platoon of 50 guys led by a command squad come in on one flank 50 guys with a command squad come in from another flank and then push forward and you could actually start doing some real world badass horde maneuvers like the horns of the buffalo and trying to encircle your opponent and just hit them from every angle. You might not have a huge amount of deep strike because you've only got 30 scions, but with so many guys coming in from every table edge except your opponents, you can absolutely start threatening every single point on the board. Nowhere is safe from the mighty guard horde. And on that rather bombastic note, we are going to bring today's video to a close. I'm really interested to see what you guys have come up with down in that comment section. And if you've enjoyed today's video, then make sure you smash that like button and also subscribe to never miss an episode. If you want to support the channel and see more content like this, then please consider becoming a channel member or Patreon. One of the big perks of becoming a supporter is you gain access to the Mordian Glory Discord, an online community of almost 1,500 active people. It's always popping off in the MG Discord, and we've got channels for tactics, army lists, hobbying, painting, and even a pretty spicy meme section as well. And I want to take a moment to say a big thank you to all of the latest channel members. So thank you to Looted Gamer, Mario, Alex Ribchester, Quivicus, Nyx, Offensive Brainbug, Treefire X, The Dash, Ben, and Nope Maybe. Thank you guys for doing your part. I'm also going to do a shout out to the latest Patreons as well. So a massive thank you to Jeff Silverbloom, Sven Langbean, Captain Neverscared, and Deathcore Commander. And last, but certainly not least, I want to say a special, heartfelt, personal thank you to all of my top tier Patreons. These are the War Masters, the people who have truly gone above and beyond the call of duty. So a massive thank you to Alan Blunt III, Bon Bon Vert, 
Mark Pancody, Ride Master 134 1, Ross Miller, Sawfish Trombone, John Stubbs, Diesel Fox, and of course, August Varney. Thank you guys. Your generous support makes a huge difference. I hope you all enjoyed today's video. Thank you for watching. And of course, as always, I'll see you guys next time.